everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I am Ramon Mejia here, bringing you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. This is episode number 82 of the podcast, and this week I have five new Lit RPG reviews just for you, and this random thing or you know, roaming through the air. Um, this week I have, again, just five new Lit RPGs. It's a holiday week. I'm recording this particular podcast a bit earlier than normal, so just five. Um, there are a lot of other new releases in the Lurpage community, so I'll hopefully have a chance to catch up on all those uh, at some other point. Okay, uh, but this week I'll be reviewing uh, The Actuator, The Last Key, uh, which is titled itself A Lit RPG Adventure. I'll get into my issues with that later. Uh, two, uh, The Conduit, book one of Epic Online. Uh, after that, it'll be Bloody Crucible, Lone Wolf, a Lit RPG series. After that, it'll be The Airship, a futuristic dungeon core, which is the laboratory book two. And then last, it's going to be Viridian Gate Online, The Imperial Legion, which is book four in that particular series. But of course, we begin our show, though, with Lit RPG News. Now, our first story in Lit RPG News is, uh, this is kind of a funny one for me, at least. Um, Gabriel Wathwick is breaking the mold again. He's the author of the first standard Lit RPG, the Earth Online series, which is about E. Y R T H. If you want to go check it out, um, it is highly hilarious, full of pot humor, jokes, um, um, a bunch of fun stuff. Um, but now he's changing the audiobook game too. Um, if you've read the series before, you know the author includes a playlist of music that goes along with each story. Like at the beginning of each chapter, um, there's a, a suggestion for like, oh, here's a track to get you in the mood for this particular chapter. Um, and the author puts a lot of work into combining um, and kind of theming. Um, creating a nice theme playlist for his story that you can listen along to as you're, you know, reading the story. Um, um, some works for some people, doesn't work for other people. I think it's a very innovative way to combine music and, and books. Um, now the author want actually to do an audiobook version of his, of his series, but Amazon is rather particular about copyrights because he doesn't own any of the rights to the music. It's just music he loves. Um, and so he wasn't able to do it. Uh, so instead he decided to make his, um, novels into a podcast because nobody basically says, no, you can't do that. Um, and so he's, um, at, he uh, has each song playing before the chapter on the podcast episode, and then he reads his own story. Um, and despite the unpolished nature of the recordings, it's very entertaining to listen to one because of the story itself. It's funny. Uh, but then also the author, um, does some very interesting choices in his voice work for, for his characters. And he puts a lot of enthusiasm into it. So you can tell that it's, it's, it's kind of a passion project. Um, and again, it's very highly entertaining. I would encourage you to go check it out. Um, if you like stoner comedies in general, or just like stoner stories, plus it's free. So you're not actually going to lose anything. Uh, we have links to it, uh, in the show notes for the iTunes version. And it's also on Podbean. Uh, I believe you can also find it on Spotify as well. Um, but again, free entertainment, Super funny. Go check it out. Um, you'll like it or you won't. But I, I, I thought it personally was very funny. Okay. Uh, also, in Lit RPG News, we have uh, this past weekend, um, if you hadn't heard, um, I hosted a Lit RPG Authors Game Session. It was myself, Charles Dean, James Hunter, Dakota Kraut, Blaze Corbin, and Hugo Huesca. All great Lit RPG authors. All have really good stuff that I've reviewed. I have. Um, I don't think anything in there I've given less than a 7 out of 10 for most of it. Uh, and we just had a really fun time playing games and harassing each other and uh, talking to the people in the chat room because it was on YouTube, um, uh, YouTube Live. Uh, and so people were actually watching us as we played the game. Um, we did two sections with like a, a, a trivia section um, and a discussion section where they had to like make up theories and, and convince the judges to, to choose them. Highly entertaining. Uh, not so much for the game kind of because they're all just really fun guys with good personalities and we goofed on each other a lot. Uh, so I encourage you to go check it out. It's actually going to be episode number 81 of the podcast, which is why this one's 82. Um, but you can also look at it on our website, um, YouTube page or on the Facebook page. Really funny, hilarious stuff. I've actually watched it multiple times at this point just because it was that entertaining for me uh, and I was there. Uh, so very funny stuff. Okay, uh, that's it for Lit RPG News. These are a few of the stories that are out now that I haven't had a chance to review or look at at all. 
but I'm letting you know that they're out uh, if you want to go check them out. We have Jonathan Brooks, who wrote Dungeon Player, um, a Letter Petit Dungeon Core Adventure. Sounds interesting just from the title. I haven't read it, though. Uh, also, um, this one was actually a little bit of a surprise to, to catch on, mostly because the cover didn't change. This is Justin Miller's World Keeper. This is the second book in the series called The Dawn of an Era. Uh, I really enjoyed book one. Uh, I just almost missed this one because the cover is exactly the same, and he doesn't like put the new uh, like subtitle on his covers. So I, I just thought it was, I, my mind just, just assumed it was the first one, and I haven't heard any news about it coming out. So I'm letting you know if you like that first book. The second one is out. Um, also, the sixth book in the Feral series is out called Under the Black Flag. Out now. Go check it out. Um, I've had a few issues with like the more recent versions. Like, oh, that's getting a little, you know, but okay, it's out. Uh, also, uh, the I can't remember if this is the third or fourth book. No, it's book three. The Sand that says on the on the cover. Uh, Eden's Gate book three, The Sands by Edward Brody is out currently. I enjoyed books one and two. Very, very good story. Uh, Buck three is out now. Um, now these ones are actually going to be out. I'm recording this on, um, before Thanksgiving. Um, by the time most of you see this, this will already be out. Which is why I'm including on the out now section, uh, wounded legion, which is the book two in the armored souls, um, series, which is a, um, Mecca lit RPG. Like, um, if you liked mech warriors, this is that kind of story, um, with all those kind of stats and builds and things. Um, I enjoyed book one, book two is out, uh, or when most of you see this, it'll be out by then, called Booted Legion. Uh, also, um, David Willemar's second book in his series is also going to be out. Uh, it'll be out by November the 24th, which is again when this is going to come out for most of you folks. It's The Grey Stone Chronicles, book two, The Dire Lands. Uh, the author just put out his book one um, not that long ago, uh, less than a month, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and it, it added some very good reviews. It also had a few not so great reviews where they were critical. Um, we, my review came in the middle a little bit, um, but I had a good time with it and I'm looking forward to reading book two, um, when it pops up on Amazon. So go check it out. Uh, there are also a few new audiobooks out for the, for you audiobook lovers for Little Pity. We have, uh, the game with no rules book four, uh, the perimeter defense series is out as an audiobook, and also book six of the way of the shaman is also out as an audiobook, both, um, Russian translation. So if you're into either one of the series, um, looks like the way the shaman is really catching up. I believe there's only, um, book of like another book or so in that series. Um, so th the audiobooks are catching up to the written versions. Okay. Upcoming one RPG. This is just when I read off the stories that are, that are going to be coming out in the next month or two. So feel free to skip ahead if you want to, but there is a new addition to this particular list. Uh, on the 29th of November, it'll be the gods of the second world. Uh, the weirdest new adventure book three, uh, on, I forgot the date on this one. I apologize. Uh, the Dungeon Soul Book Three is going to be out um, about then as well. Uh, on the November the thirtieth, it's going to be Infinite Assassins Daggerland Online um, Book Two. Uh, on December the first, according to the author, uh, the Slam Dungeon Chronicles Book Four. I think it is. I, always, I keep forgetting to put the number in there. Um, on the December the second, we're actually going to have two versions of the story coming out. It's a uh, Dan Oshinohofen's Apocalypse Gate series. He's going to have two versions, an author's cut, which is very much going to be um, not safe for work. Um, he said it's going to be very adult, um, but he's also going to be putting out a PG-16 edition, which is going to not as be as um, graphic, apparently. Um, and they're, they're just going to be two different listings. Um, the podcast is going to be reviewing both of them. I'm going to be reading the, the not safe for work version. And doing a comparison to it for the uh, PG-16 version, I'll let you know where the differences are. I assume the storyline is basically going to be the same, though. It just might have extra graphic content for the not safe for work version. Um, on the December the 3rd, it's going to be The Land of the Predators, Chaos Seed Book 7. So we're all looking forward to that. Um, also, December the 4th, The Twilight Obelisk, Mirror World Book 4 is going to be out. Uh, on the December the 1st as well, um, Gia Killa's next book in the series, the Romo Archon series, book six, is going to be out called The Starry Skies of Darkon. So fans of that series will be looking forward to that one. Uh, the last book in the Emerilia series, I guess Saga at this point, um, is going to be out on December the 5th. That's book 11 in that series. 11 great novels. Um, and this is going to be the last one on December the 5th. Uh, Paternia Online, Desert Storm which is the third book in that series by Don Chapman. It's going to be out on December the 13th. Uh, and then on into January, I know we skip from December 13th all the way to January 17th. You know, I don't tell authors when to put their books out. Uh, it's going to be a trap for the potentate of the dark herbalist book 
3 uh, is going to be out there on get a January the 17th. Uh, on the 24th of January, it'll be Neuro. I'm oh, sorry, The Neuro. Uh, it's book three in the Neuro series called The Reapers. Um, and that'll begin January 24, 2018. And there you go. Those are all the stuff that's coming up. On to new releases and reviews. Hey. Okay. Uh, first review is going to be The Actuator, The Last Key, a lit RPG adventure. Okay. Um, this one's written by James Wymore. This is the fourth book in that series. It's called Actuator. There's a little four in there. There you go. Um, it is 368 pages, $5.99. It is available on Kindle Limited. Now, I'm not going to read you the author's description, mostly because it really doesn't ultimately matter for the review. Um, basically, this is... This is not lit RPG. That's the short, and, you know, short short of it. Um, for some reason, the author or the publisher of this series wants to tag the story as lit RPG. It is not in any way, shape, or form. Um, it it's really just seemed like a blatant attempt to cash in on a hot market at this point. Um, I remember reading the first book a couple years ago. Um, it was originally published in 2013, and even at that point, I was like, "Oh, is this?" Because the description she was like, "Oh." a change in this world. It's some game like world potentially. And I'm like, okay, I'll give it a shot. But I read it. I'm like, this is clearly not Little BG, which is fine. At that point, um, it hadn't advertised itself as Little BG, which is why I didn't review it at the time. Um, but as of now, the entire series has been rebranded to include the title, a lit RPG adventure, which to me just seems again, like a blatant attempt to, to as a money grab for the lit RPG community. Um, the, again, I have a, a screenshot here. If you guys want to check it out of the original, uh, listing of, and how it was advertised back in 2013. Again, it says very clearly, um, an act, the actuator fractured earth 2013. Um, and again, no mention of Liberty D, even the description sounds a little bit different. Like it was trying to decide which market it was going to go for. And again, this is a pop novel that's not just published from the author directly. It has an actual publisher. Um, and so maybe it's just the publisher's pressure of, we want to try to you know, get into the hot market. I don't know. I can't say for sure. Um, the, the, the story itself is not bad in any way, shape or form. Um, the writing is not bad. The story is decent. The main character travels through like different lands in this world. Um, war machine kind of warped reality and kind of created these little subdomains in different genres. Some of which are, have like a game influence. Um, but again, there are no RPG mechanics in the story in any way, shape or form, which is, which means it's not lit RPG. That's kind of, it's in the title, you know? Um, and I think it's personally, I think it's disingenuous, um, to say that this series is, or to try to rebrand it as such, um, just to get people to pick up a story. Um, it gets a score of four to 10 for me, but a bigger issue for me is like, it hurts this author's name brand when this stuff happens because people are going to start associating the author's name um james wymore with this tactic and i'm like that's he's he's not a bad author in any way shape or form it's just this is not the way to go about trying to get sales um, at least to me um so i'm going to get a score of four out of ten for the actuator the last key a little rpg adventure okay Next review is going to be from Eric Anderson for The Conduit. And apparently this is his first novel. Um, in First novel, I guess, he's ever written, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. And, and it's also the first novel in the Epic Online series. Okay, this one is 166 pages, according to Amazon. It is $2.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. I will read you the author's description. Eric Collins steps into a brand new virtual reality world. Epic Online. There, he meets allies and enemies, gains powers, and has his ass handed to him a few times. This is the author's take on the emergent genre, lit RPG. For those familiar with the genre, oh, I'll just you know, I'll skip that part. Um, basically, there were some things I really liked about the story, but most of it, there were some serious issues. Um, there are two well-developed and interesting parts of this novel. The first is the technology behind the ability to fully immerse oneself in the game, the conduit, the tech that allows this. It's it's kind of like, um, if you remember in the Matrix, there's like a, a, a surgery they get or they have that implant in the back of their neck. This is kind of describing the technical aspects of it behind that. And I, I like that part because the sci-fi portion of it was very well researched. It felt plausible. And it even takes into account like some social stigma um, that may occur from people getting elective surgery to play a game. I thought it was really well done. 
And now the second bit of the story that I thought was really nice was the magic system the author created for the main character. It uses a, a language-like system that has core words and modifiers that change spell effects. And I thought it was like nice and flexible. We could do a lot of things with it. And I enjoyed releasing what the next magic word the main character learned was and how he used it. Very nice done again. Unfortunately, beyond those two things, um, the rest of the story feels very underdeveloped. And that's going to be the key word for this novel. Um, only one character felt like they had personality. Everyone else was really kind of flat. They had no background information um, to kind of inform you who they were. The RPG mechanics in the story exist. It's it's totally RPG. But they had very few, very little depth outside of that magic system. There are levels, but they seem to kind of be handed out after every experience, after every fight the main character had. Um, it's just missing like a lot of details uh, for what happens in the game. For example, there's no XP notifications, there's no damage notifications, there's no monster player health. Um, and again, those those things aren't required for it to be a little bit story. It's just that if you're going to use this kind of system with like levels and MMO mechanics, um, when you omit those things, those little small details, you're 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 losing your ability to show relative strength between opponents to give the the reader the understanding about is this a hard fight is this an easy fight um what are the benefits of the fight how what are the like giving them insight into the behind the scenes mechanics of, of the game um and, and that that just you lose an opportunity to create depth within the game mechanics and that's just a writer's choice i'm just saying that it's something that i thought could have been fleshed out a bit more now in addition to that um there's also other things that happen in the story that i think again just with a little more development, could have been much better. Um, for example, there's an attempt at town building, but it kind of feels forced in that place. Um, the main character saves um, this tent community of people uh, from orcs, and within a few sentences, literally, he goes from saving the town to suddenly being in charge of the village. And there's no setup or there's no transitionary period. Um, there's no game notification saying, oh, he's given ownership of the village. Um, there's n- neither is there was some like town village or meeting where the, all the NPCs decide that they want the main character in charge. It's just literally one char- one paragraph he's saving them and the next he's upgrading buildings and scouts are reporting to him like he's in charge. And it, there just wasn't development or setup for that particular situation. So it felt a little out of place. Um, at the same time, Again, that same thing of being undeveloped is part of the story um, structure, unfortunately. Um, events occur, a lot of events in the story occur without any real setup. Player refugees appear and are just a part of the story suddenly, even though there's no deep detail about where they're coming from, um, you know, or where that whole storyline is coming from. Um, I, it, 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 I understand that it's a setup for like later twists in the story. It's just that there's a lack of development and setup for it, and it feels awkward. Um, and even though the story does take like a very interesting sci-fi twist near the very, very end, it doesn't do much for the story overall. Um, a lot of the story just wasn't interesting because I never felt everything, anything was really important or developed well. And again, this is not a bad story. I'm not saying that it is. It, it has a lot of good potential. Um, it's just that much of it felt flat to me, especially the game mechanics, which is what I personally, I look forward to in our, in letter RPGs that it's an RPG world and I can understand how it works. And if I want to make my own character in that system, I have the knowledge hopefully to do so. And that just wasn't here in this case. Um, for me, the sci-fi stuff at the end, the tech, the magic system, keep it from being like a meh, like being like, okay, boring. Um, but it's not enough to get it to a, like a good score, like a seven out of 10. So for me, uh, the conduit book one Epic online gets a score of six out of 10. So there you go. Okay. On to our next story, the bloody crucible lone wolf, little BD series written by E C G. There you go. It's a fun name. This one is 315 pages, $2.99. It is available on Kindle limited. I'll read you the author's description. Richard Wolf McCall was a member of the U S special forces. The key term, is was that's what it has written um when the last mission to stop and destroy a new type of went and goes awry he finds himself in a new world forced into a new world reminiscent of a video game he often played with his team he must decide what he will do gods factions and empire hunting him who why where and how he decides to fight will determine his fate while the scars of the past continue to plague him okay um if I, I'm not mistaken, this is also a, a first novel for this author, um, and it shows in a lot of ways. Um, look right off the bat, my biggest issue with this novel is the fact that it doesn't know what it wants to be, uh, and it becomes very apparent very quickly in the novel, and it, it, I basically lost the interest in the story about midway through because um, some of the story choices that the author made, he 
he, I'll, I'll, I'll get you in a minute. Um, but it, it becomes boring to me. Uh, the game mechanics are detailed, but later on you can tell they also try to actually change them mid story. Um, and overall, those things made the story unentertaining for me. And I kind of, like I said, I lost interest. Um, I'm going to spoil some of the story because it, it requires an understanding of some of the details of the, of the novel. And if you want to read this and you don't want spoilers, skip ahead. It gets a five out of ten. Uh, but I'm going to be talking about a few details in the story just to show illustrate where um, the author kind of lost me. Okay, you've been warned. Okay, now the first 8% of this novel is, it almost was like a futuristic military fiction with the main character fighting in a far-flung future where the U.S. is at war with China for the second time. There's actually a, a pretty decent amount of world building in this section, um, describing world events, um, things that influence the main character's life, his backstory, um, and not badly written right? in any way, shape, or form. Again, it's not lit RPG in any way, shape, or form. Like, there's literally no RPG mechanics. There's no game stuff. It's really about this 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 war. Um, and I almost feel like at some point the author was writing this, and then he said, oh, I'm going to switch genres. Uh, or he set it up as a bunch of backstory that doesn't really matter because at the 8% mark in the story, the main character is transported to the game world, and he stays there for the entire novel, which means all that backstory you just read doesn't mean Dilly Squat because the main character never goes back there and it doesn't um, directly influence this new game world at all, uh, which is some, like, almost a recurring theme in this novel in that there's a bunch of story and a setup and the author kind of abandons it. It makes you feel like it didn't matter that you spent your time there. Uh, but I'll get into that. The only thing you really need to know from the first 8% of the novel is basically that the main character is a soldier uh, and he's using this new, new weapon um, and it has unintended consequence of sending him to this game world. There you go. Um, at the 9% mark, the main character is in like a character creation zone between worlds. It's not really explained, uh, but there he makes an avatar. He has special abilities. That's really well done because um, it gives you some details about the game world the mechanics. Um, and, and from there to about the 17% mark when he's actually in the game world, um, he's figuring out how the world works, what are the, what are the rules of this world. Um, and it's almost a survivalist story. Um, where the main character is crafting tools, making shelters, fighting beasts in the, in, in the wild for experience points, trapping stuff. Um, and I actually kind of like that part. It was simple and it made sense. Um, and I'm sad that it actually left it, to be honest. But it does. Every, every story has a transition. I don't have an issue with that. Um, now, at the 17% mark of the story, though, the story shifts. Um, and it stops being that story. Else, right? It goes into the main character trying to stop slavers from taking a town, which is fine. Um, I don't, I don't, again, I run problem with that. The fighting sections that were really interesting. Um, if a little exaggerated, the main character uses like a Rambo style guerrilla tactics to fight this huge army. Um, and I'm like, okay, that, that, that it is what it is. It's not my favorite, but it's not bad at all either. Um, but then at the 23% mark, this is where the problems start to occur. And you can kind of tell that the author is, trying to retcon the story because of the 23% mark of the, of the novel, it, um, it shifts to the main character getting this weird quest to help a 50,000 year old woman, um, reconnect with her people and some vague quest to get her to a temple. And then at the 38% mark, the author actually retcons the story and he introduces gods saying, claiming that they're the ones who brought the main character to the story, kind of eliminating the entire you know, connection between the first 8% and the rest of the novel, um, where the main character is using this new weapon. And that's what gets them. And then at the point, it's like, no, 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 it was really, or sorry, 38% marks. It was the gods. And that got me my first eye roll in this novel. Now, what really did it for me was at the 54% mark. Um, because, well, I'll, again, a little spoiler. Um, after 30% mark, the main character again goes to the city. He helps get this woman there. There's a bunch of accusations and training and, you know, stuff, but he still has that main quest to basically get this woman to like some temple. Okay. So that's like the big focus of the story. And then just in the middle of the story at the 54 minute mark, the author abandons that entire quest line. And he, and it kind of makes you feel like the entire first half of the novel suddenly doesn't matter. And it, it, it's just kind of a frustrating situation for a reader because you get invested in the characters, you get invested in the storyline, and then all of a sudden it just doesn't matter at all. Um, at this point, the main character is literally just, for no reason whatsoever, he's accused of being a traitor, a murderer, a spy, he's kicked out of the village that he just saved. Um, and from there on, it's just him killing stuff, some stuff with goblins that doesn't, again, doesn't really matter the story. Um, and even in the end of the story, the author, it seems like the author even abandons the main character's perspective because he shifts the point of view 
to other characters. And he even introduces new characters at the very end of the story, right before he ends it. Uh, and it just, again, it's, it's just frustrating. Um, as far as the game mechanics on the story go, they're there. And for the most part, they're rather detailed. Uh, but again, I think I mentioned at the beginning that the author kind of changed them. Uh, and, and he did this, bec- I, I kind of like guess, because he, he basically understood, he realized that the way he set up the game mechanics with the stat and skill system was set up originally were very limited because he set them up in the very beginning. Very, he very specifically says the only way to improve stats and skills is through the use of stat points and skill points that are gained by leveling, and that was it. Then later on, at like the 30 and 50% mark, he introduces new concepts. He's like, oh no, now there are progressive skills uh, and magic that improve with use. So you can just practice them. And also conditioning, uh, which lets um, stats be improved through chaining suddenly. And I'm like, okay, that's the author again, kind of retconning his own world system. Um, and it's, again, it's not a really big thing in itself, but it kind of reflects how the story just seemed to have gotten away from the author. Uh, and he doesn't really know, he didn't really plan like where it was going in any way, shape or form. And, it, and especially when it contradicts other already established world rules, it's a little frustrating for the reader. Um, overall, again, because the novel doesn't really know where it's going, um, I got kind of bored because if, if the novel and the author doesn't know where the story is going, why should I invest? Especially if there's going to be like these huge plot twists that make the, the everything you previously read seem like it was relevant. Um, so there you go. I, I finished the story. I really did. It was kind of a slog though because I, like I said, I lost interest at, at that point. Uh, for me, it gets a score of 5 out of 10. It's again the Bloody Crucible, Lone Wolf. It lit RPG series gets a score of 5 out of 10. Kind of meh at this point. Okay, uh, on to our next review. It's going to be The Airship, a futuristic dungeon core, the laboratory book two, written by Skylar Grant. Uh, this one is 235 pages, $3.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Uh, I'll read you the author's description. The core has been transferred to an airship, crashed deep on the rim. There, Emma and Anna will encounter feuding factions, terrifying monstrosities, and new powered foes in need of becoming research experiments. With a badly damaged vessel, they must steal, scavenge, and fight for what they need to upgrade to survive. More upgrades, more insults, more science. Okay, I see author's description. Um, and just as a short summary, it's a fun story. Um, it has all the dungeon expansion, research, and action of the first novel. Only now it's set on a flying ship, so Emma, the main character, the artificial intelligence of the dungeon core, now she gets to explore the larger galaxy and the larger world. Um, there's also new characters for the main character to experiment on. My favorite being Amy, who gets three personalities for the price of one. So it's a fun character. Um, there are a few spoilers ahead. So if you want to skip ahead, it's a seven out of ten. But these are just a few details that I either like, really like, didn't. Okay. Um, there are a few things in the story that are, might bother some people. Um, at the 90% mark, um, for some reason, the author decides to drop the main storyline. Um, like I said, overall, I enjoy the story. I'm not saying I didn't. Um, it's just that this is, it's a departure from what the author did in book one. And it, it really is reminiscent of what he was doing in the Crucible Shard series, which is the author's other, other big literary series. In that particular series, on a fairly regular basis, he would kind of just teleport his characters into like these mini games where they had different game mechanic rules. And it was just... It, in, the, in that series, is kind of a nice departure because occasionally you're just like, oh, here's a break from the story. Uh, then when I'm in the adventure. Um, it stands out a little bit more here because I wasn't expecting it. Um, and, and again, at about the 90, 90% mark, the author drops his main characters into a real-time strategy resource management minigame. Um, and again, if, if you... If you you either going to like it or you're going to hate it. Um, it's really nothing in between. I personally enjoyed it. I like RTS games, but it really does just feel like a huge speed bump in in the end of the novel. Um, so you might just, if you don't like it, you can actually skip it, skip ahead of it um, till you get to the end. You're not going to miss much. Um, and the end is also left pretty wide open. Um, so if you're looking for a novel with a definite resolution um, to its plot, this is not that story. It, it, it's basically, it's kind of a cliffhanger. Um, and it is what it is. Um, overall, this is an RPG adventure story. It's not this character driven arc or anything like that. It really is just about action, adventure, upgrades to a dungeon, his experiments, seeing what upgrades he gets in the, in the story. Um, and as long as you understand that when you're, when you're reading it and you don't expect more, you'll you're probably have a good time. I did. Um, for me, Airship, the Futuristic Dungeon Core, Laboratory Book 2, it gets a score of 7 out of 10. I enjoyed it. There you go.
Okay, one more. This one is Viridian Gate Online, Imperial Legions, the Viridian Gate Archives, Book 4. Man, that is a mouthful in this series as a series name. I just call it VGO, Viridian Gate Online, Book 4. Um, it's written by J. A. Hunter, also known as James A. Hunter. Um, he also has another series, which he uses that other, other name for. Um, this is the author, one of the authors we had, sorry, one of the authors we had uh, on the Little RPG game um, day. So if you hear the name, this is his story. Okay, this one is 400 pages-ish. The uh, As of this recording, Amazon doesn't have an actual page count. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to say it's about 400 pages. Um, it is priced at $4.99. Um, it is available on Kindle Unlimited. Okay, I'll read you the author's description um, in this timeline. It's December 2042. The Imperial Legion marches and war looms on the horizon. Jack Mitchell and his misfit crew of rebels never wanted to fight with the Empire, but the time for diplomacy has passed. Ruthless tech genius Robert Osmark is coming, and trailing behind him is a vast army determined to wipe out the Crimson Lice from the face of Elgard. Impossibly, Jack has united the warring Merc Elf clans under his banner, and even with their aid, the alliance is still badly outnumbered, and Osmark has some nasty tricks up his sleeves. And while the long-awaited battle unfolds, an ancient evil stirs in the heart of Viridian Gate Online. One that will change the game forever. So there you go. Okay, um, my overall review, yay, book four. It's an enjoyable story. Um, I have to say this is probably one of the best books in the series just because it, every single book in the series seems to kind of refine um, the storyline, the characters, what people enjoy, uh, and the every single book just gets better for me. Um, and I think part of why I like this one in particular so much is the fact that I understand the villains, the, the series' main villain, Osmark, better. There's a side story that they have to put out called the um, the Artificer that tells um, Osmark's backstory, his 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 origin story, basically. Um, and and he stopped being just this meg, you know, Bond-ish megalomaniac villain to me. Um, he has depth, and I can almost empathize with the things that he does now. Um, it's a really good, you know, side story. Um, and additionally, there are also some great new characters in the story that I really instantly loved. Um, one being Jay Taylor, who's a, uh, a contributor to the podcast community. He's a moderator for a lot of the Facebook groups for Little BG. He's a beta reader for a ton of people. Um, and he's, he's also a supporter, um, financially, like he, he supports people's Patreons, Little BG authors galore. Um, and he's just overall a guy. I had a chance to meet him personally when we were at Dragon Con. Um, and it was fun to see him named as a character. Um, I'm not going to spoil what character it is, but it was, I just, once I saw it, it like, it made me laugh so hard. I couldn't help it. Um, additionally, an actual, like longer term main character is uh, Joseph, the grave monger. Um, instantly just like, oh, I see potential in his character and what he can do for the series as far as like diversifying, um, the game mechanics in it. And I'm not going to spoil who exactly he is. Um, but I strongly suspect that his inclusion is going to lead to another cool side story. Um, using different game mechanics for VGO. So I think that there's a lot of good story potential in just that main character, I'm sorry, in just that new character, Joseph the Green Monger. So keep an eye out for him. Um, and overall in the story, there's all the RPG action you love, adventure, um, you know, including good character progression, new skills, new abilities, new magic, whatever. Um, there are some things that I'm on the fence about. Um, again, the author says it in his, in his, in his description, the game will change forever. And, it's totally true. Um, there's some things in the game, like I'm not sure if I'm going to like how it's going to change, but it is going to change whether I approve of it or not. I'm, I'm curious to see how it's going to play out in future stories. So I'm um, like I said, I'm on the fence about it, but overall I enjoyed the story. Good action packed story with plenty of nice surprises. Um, Viridian get online Imperial Legion, the Viridian gate archives book four. long title. Uh, it gets a score of seven out of 10 for me. I had a good time with it. So thank you very much. Uh, James Hunter for writing it. And that's it. I know again, short episode, um, short week, holiday week, apparently, uh, for a lot of people in the States. Uh, so happy Thanksgiving. If you're do that kind of thing, gobble gobble. Um, but that's it for me on the show for the week. Uh, thank you very much for listening and following and for hanging out with me. Um, while I talk about little RPG folks, um, without your support, I can't do the show at all. So thank you very much for giving me your time or your support. Um, you can follow the show on Facebook, on Twitter, YouTube, on Patreon, um, if you enjoy the podcast in any way, shape, or form, and you want to support us, you can do find out all the way you do so at litrpgpodcast.com forward slash support. Uh, but again, overall, folks, thanks for chilling out with me. I always have a good time. 
going on and on about little RPG, this, this community that I love. And I always want to thank you all for, for being a part of it because without you, none of us authors could do it. Um, you know, so it only because you were support that we, a lot of us have been able to, to go from just readers to writers to even full-time writers sometimes. So thank you everybody. Um, until we can hang out again, folks, remember to go read some little RPG. Goodbye.